cosmology is a big subject and it uh, seeks to answer some very fundamental questions about the nature of the universe and, and it gives important perspective on our place in it. The early universe passed through a hot phase uh, in which it was dense enough that nuclear reactions could go on um, that is called Big Bang Nucleosynthesis and occurred in the, just the first three minutes that the uh, universe was around uh, and basically established uh, the fundamental uh, pattern of elemental abundances and that is that most of the universe is made of hydrogen and helium uh, and that's what the sun is and most stars are and everything else uh, that chemists are interested in and the periodic table uh, it's just sort of a sprinkling on top of that, uh, and indeed most of those other elements were made inside of stars uh, later on. Um, it only jives with the abundances that we observe in, in stars and, and in the galactic gas clouds uh, if, if things work exactly as we expected them to in those first few minutes, and that requires two rather different bits of physics. Uh, one is that the universe was expanding at that time as um, Einstein understood and that you can also derive from basic thermodynamics. It's hot as it expands, it cools adiabatically, and, and so at some point you get to the right density and temperature for nuclear reactions to go on, which is the other bit of physics. We have to understand those nuclear reactions. On the one hand, I think those aspects of uh, the Big Bang cosmology are very well established. Uh, but as we've moved forward in the later part of the 20th century and, and on into this century, um, there are puzzles that come up, and uh, we have had to sort of invoke some tooth fairies to keep things uh, sensible. Um, one of those is dark matter. Uh, when we apply the laws of gravity as we understand them to individual galaxies, clusters of galaxies, and the universe as a whole, things don't quite work out. We have made up uh, this story that there is dark matter, there is extra mass there that we cannot see, but which suffices to uh, explain all these different observations. Um, and the the caveat, though, is that we're in inferring dark matter, we are assuming the normal law of gravity holds. And the only test of gravity we have on these scales is the systems that don't behave right. So uh, it seems like a very sound assumption that, that Einstein taught us everything we need to know. Uh, and if that is true, then we absolutely have to have dark matter. Uh, but one could also take the opposite attitude that the need to invoke dark matter in these systems is a hint that, you know, Einstein did not teach us everything we need to know, uh, and there might be something else going on. So, MON is a specific hypothesis for how the force law changes uh, at a particular physical scale that is not part of Einstein's theory or Newton's. So uh, in uh, Newtonian gravity, uh, basically the strength of gravity falls off as the inverse square law. Of course, it's Newton's famous universal law of gravity. Um, that is why we infer dark matter. That inverse square law doesn't give you enough gravity to explain the observations given the amount of luminous matter we see. Uh, so the other idea is, okay, change the equation. Um, and um, that is what people generically mean when they talk about modified gravity, and there can be many specific examples of how you would do that. You know, look at the solar system where gravity, as we know it, is extraordinarily well-tested and, and has to be just as Einstein taught us. Uh, and then you look at galaxies where things don't work out so well. And, and indeed, people tried this in the early days when the dark matter problem really, you know, became clear. Um, and that does not work. You can write down equations that change the force law on some scale greater than, say, uh, 
a kiloparsec on large scale that you wouldn't notice the change in the solar system, but you would in galaxies. Uh, and that, that just doesn't work for a whole variety of reasons. Uh, in galaxies, the place where the uh, discrepancy occurs, that is, in the inner parts of galaxies, what you see is pretty much what you get. The stars suffice to explain the motions. It's not until you get far out in the outskirts of galaxies that you start to notice the dark matter problem. Um, but there is no specific distance at which the problem sets in. Some galaxies, uh, you don't need any dark matter until you're way, way far out. Uh, others, you need it almost right away, never instantly from the get-go, but pretty close. Uh, and so it's, it's just a mess. There is no one scale where the problem occurs. The, the point uh, I'm making here is that if it were a universal thing, it should always occur at the same length scale and not differ from galaxy to galaxy. There's a dark matter problem. We all agree there's a dark matter problem. When things go wrong, you have to bear in mind that maybe we got something wrong along the way or, or missed something um, that uh, is important. And if you assume Einstein's gravity, then the mass density of the universe is bigger than that. And so that leads you inevitably to there being something else that's not just modules. Um, of course, you know, if you drop the assumption that Einstein taught us everything we need to know, then that, that argument goes along with it. Um, then we're in a much harder situation of figuring out something even better than Einstein. That's, that's not easy. Doing that, but I mean, supersymmetry is my favorite example. Um, it was a beautiful idea, very compelling. You know, was basically accepted widely in the eighties as you know must be true, um, basically because it was theoretically compelling and, and as they like to say, beautiful. Um, it, it, it's not there. It's just not. All the predictions that supersymmetry made have failed badly, and the most popular form of dark matter, the WIMP, is a supersymmetric particle. So you only have WIMPs if you have supersymmetry. And so now we've gotten to this weird point where most people seem to have forgotten that you, you need supersymmetry to even have WIMPs. Now we, we have WIMPs because we know we need to have this dark matter, but the supersymmetry that is required to make those things exist doesn't work. Um, and so, and it, and it failed in lots of ways. <laughs> and the, the Higgs, for example, you had to have the Higgs particle uh, to have supersymmetry. And so, you know, they had such a hard time finding that. Uh, I figured, well, maybe it's yes, because there's no supersymmetry. Well, it turns out they detected it finally, of course. And, you know, within a few months, all my particle physics colleagues were complaining because the Higgs was too normal. So it turns out that, that I had been misled as to exactly what the Higgs was. The Higgs was just the last of the standard model particles. So it was something that had to exist in the framework of the standard model. And it does, great. But in order for there to be a sort of a, a window into supersymmetry, the Higgs had to be non-standard, right? There's a, a very simple version of the Higgs that appears in the standard model. And if there's supersymmetry beyond that, then various things should be different about the Higgs. Uh, it should have split states or something like that. Nope. You, you don't see that in the LHC data. And the LHC data are, uh, you know, plenty energetic to see anything that the supersymmetry predictions were being made. Um, uh, another example of this is the dark matter. The WIMPs that I was talking about, these are expected in that context to weigh about 100 GeV. That's about 100 times the mass of a proton. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but in the ballpark, that's what it ought to be. Uh, and so if supersymmetry is real and if these limbs are filling the universe, the LHC is operating at energies of 7 TeV, right? It's, it's got tens, hundreds of times enough energy to spontaneously create wimps in these collisions. Nope. Zero. Hasn't happened. And it, and it has gotten to the point where most honest theorists are uncomfortable when they, they realize that the supersymmetry has serious problems. Uh, with the 21 centimeter observations, we've now added a 
new wrinkle by talking about this really charge MEV track matter, whatever the heck they're calling it. Um, this is not your traditional dark matter. It is non-standard physics on top of the already non-standard physics that we've forgotten is non-standard just because we're familiar with it. Other people don't want to admit that. They're happy to keep adding bells and whistles to their theory uh, to dodge the constraints. 